Hey yo everybody, Zeon over here from Nintendo Life, and today we're here to share with you our review of Kaze and the Wild Masks on the Nintendo Switch. Now, this review was originally written by Stuart Jip for NintendoLife.com, but was reworked into this video by me. Despite being both a beloved and hugely successful series, the Donkey Kong Country series feels a little underrated, offering a weighty yet fast-paced alternative take on the side-scrolling platformer. It's always been second fiddle to Nintendo's flagship Super Mario titles. It's a surprise that such an overt love letter to Rare's ape-tastic series has taken so long to arrive. Ukulele in the Impossible Lair came extremely close, but Kaze in the Wild Masks perhaps goes one better. It's a thrilling, beautifully designed homage to the SNES Donkey Kong trilogy, with a few elements taken from Tropical Freeze to boot. The game makes no secret of its roots, actively inviting comparison with a whole host of features effectively lifted from Donkey Kong Country. For example, there are two well-hidden bonus barrels per level in the form of portals that lead you to some extremely familiar minigames. You know, beat all the enemies or collect all the gems, that sort of stuff. It's familiar and very polished, and rather than dumping you out of the challenge room if you run out of time or take a hit, you're simply able to press the A button to restart, which can help reduce repetition and frustration. Level design is relatively linear, with a focus on forward momentum. Kaze is equipped with ear-based attacks, boasting a sideways spin that acts much like a roll from Donkey Kong Country, and you even have the ability to jump out of it if you spin off a ledge. You're able to ground pound to dig up hidden gems, spin your ears for a a slower descent, basically like Dixie Kong's ponytail twirl, and you can pick up and throw some unspecified barrel-like containers. There are even crossbows that act precisely the same way as barrel cannons did in DKC. The masks of the title refer to transformations that Kaze can pick up, which allows her to take on the abilities of flight, swimming, wall climbing, or running really fast for the game's take on the series' infamous auto-scrolling minecart stages. The flight is identical to Squawks the Parrot from Donkey Kong Country, all the way down to the arc of its projectile attack. Swimming is closer to Tropical Freeze, with a full range of movement and a spinning attack that propels you forward. The wall climbing, air dashing tiger is more unique, though it calls to mind Mega Man X with its moveset. They're all fun to control and are a welcome diversion from the main game's platforming, even as good as it is. And the platforming is good. Very, very good. Level design throughout is downright exemplary. The difficulty curve is smooth with a couple of minor spikes here and there, and the stages flow excellently. Secrets are craftily hidden and you'll feel smart every time you find one. The enemies are varied and cleverly used, while checkpoints and extra hits are placed so perfectly that the whole thing feels playtested to oblivion. There's plenty of polish here, clear design chops made by designers who not only love Donkey Kong Country, but also understand exactly what makes it so great. We could mark the game down for unoriginality, but we think that's missing the point. It bites Donkey Kong's style so hard sometimes that obstacles can almost feel directly pasted from the SNES games. But that's a testament to how good Kaze and the Wild Masks is. And it doesn't miss a step throughout the lengthy campaign either, with no levels overstaying their welcome or lacking in either quality or variety. Like its inspiration, Kaze uses plenty of level gimmicks, gusts of wind, rope climbing, maniac chases, but it does so carefully and in smart, creative ways. And it's a visual treat too, opting to avoid the now dated pre-rendered look, it's all clean, attractive, and expressive sprites married to clear and easy to analyze scenery. You'll never miss a jump because you're not sure what is or isn't a platform, and you'll never fall through a ledge because of any muddy disconnects between visuals and hitboxes. This is especially useful when taking on the challenging boss battles, which are nicely balanced to be testing but not gruelingly overlong, and actually in a break from the DKC feel, we thought that the bosses here called to mind the original Rayman, though with a much more reasonable level of challenge. The game is old school tough, but also is adamantly respectful of your time. There's also a casual mode that adds additional checkpoints for those that need it. There's no live system either. You get infinite retries, which can lead to a sense of attrition at times, but overall feels like the right decision given how trivial extra lives became in the Donkey Kong Country games. 
If we could criticize anything at all, it'd be nice if the world map wasn't quite so linear, but this is in keeping with the source material, and we never encountered a stage we disliked enough to want to skip, so it's a moot point, really. An absolute pleasure from start to finish. What Kaze in the Wild Masks lacks in originality, it makes up for in the strength of its level design, responsive controls, kinetic moveset, and attractive visuals. Excellent action-packed platforming through and through, with great gameplay variety and gimmicks that don't compromise on what the game is best at. Challenging, fast-paced obstacle courses and deviously hidden secret areas. Kaze in the Wild Masks is to Donkey Kong Country what Freedom Planet was to Sonic the Hedgehog. Don't miss this one. We here at Nintendo Life give Kaze in the Wild Masks on the Nintendo Switch a 9 out of 10. If you'd like to check out our full written review, you can find that along with more news and info on Kaze in the Wild Masks over at NintendoLife.com. Oh,